Morning everybody. I'm just standing in the header shed at the moment. As you can see behind me, don't get excited. We're not doing anything with the header. <laughs> I'm actually working on mum's truck. I'm just standing in here out of the wind. So it's a pretty rubbishy sort of day today. I don't know what's going on. Weather's deteriorated this week. It's just been rain and wind. It's almost summer. And uh, yeah, we've been lucky if we've strung together two days over 25. So anyway, got mum's horse truck behind me there. Um, I think she might be going to use it tomorrow and it hasn't been used in a while and we just wanted to bring it out and check it. The brakes have been sort of sticking a bit and I just took for a drive up the road and uh, sort of broke them loose. Um, I think that's just because they've been sitting in such a uh, bit of a damp area in the shed here. A bit of moisture what, and whatnot has got onto the drums and sort of rusted up. But they've, they seem to be okay now so that's not a drama. But driving along I was struggling to get over 80 so... I'm going to chuck the cab up and check the transmission fluid. I think it might be lower, and I think that might be um, uh, not allowing it to get get through the gears a bit quicker because it needs to be really high revs to change gears. So hopefully we've got enough transmission fluid here. Got it's an auto to uh, fill it. So I'm trying for mum to come down, give me a bit of a hand because it's got the um, the bed area over the top of the cab. You sort of need a person to give you a hand to open it all up and get the cab up. But uh, yeah, this is sort of my bread and butter with Isuzu's. It's what I do a lot of work on. So this is a pretty old one. I think it's like 98 or something, but still goes all right. And the older ones generally have less dramas than the new ones. So they're not too bad to work on. So I wait for mum to get down here and we'll get this cab up and have a look what's going on. Um, also, we're gonna have, a, dad's packed all the wool from shearing. As we know, shearing just finished up. So we're gonna brand that all today and um, we'll have a chat with Dad about what his thoughts were on shearing and a few other jobs going on. So we'll just sort of see what happens throughout the day. What's wrong, Molly? Alrighty, I got the cab up. As you can see, you got the engine and the trans exposed. It's a 6 uh, BD, I think, which is their pretty good old engine. But you don't see too many with the automatic transmission. It's pretty rare. Well, I haven't seen many anyway. So we're going to pull the dipstick out and chuck some fluid in there. And the way you check uh, most truck transmissions is you need to have them running and in neutral, and that will give you a correct level because it's pumping the fluid through. So I'll pour as much as I can in and see what it comes up with and hopefully it's enough because we only have a little bit <coughs> in the bottle and I don't think we have any anywhere else because this is the only automatic actually mum's car is automatic but I don't think there's any automatic transmission fluid in that so we'll see here we go Alright, so as you saw, I was just uh, checking the level, um, yeah, did not have enough fluid, so Dad's going to race into town and grab a, another bottle of it, <clears throat> so I can fill that up properly, so we can get the truck sorted and that out of the way. So in the meantime, while he's doing that, we're going to have a look at the um, coupling, couplings on the back of the tractor, uh, John Deere that is. Um, I don't know exactly what happened, but Dad reckons he was hooking up to the slasher, he was going to cut some hay, or we'll start cutting the triticale during the week and then apparently the, it was just just flowing oil straight out the coupling so like an o-ring has gone or something anyway as you can see all the water was too wet anyway so yeah i don't know if he's real happy about not being able to cut it anyway i think yeah it's past the point of needing to be cut so we're sort of up against it again as we always seem to be anyway so 
yeah, I'm going to try and pull these apart. I've never pulled a hydraulic couplings like this apart before, or well, any couplings before. <laughs> so this is, yeah, I'll be learning as I go. But uh, yeah, the circle clip in there, I think that holds these plastic covers on. And I'm going to try and take that out and pull them off and have a look what is inside. sort of hinges off I guess, it's on a little hinge, and she's very dirty. So that's what I'm sort of presented with, I'll take those circlips out, there's a spring in here, I guess it puts pressure on the ball bearings, uh, I don't really want them to fall out, no you can just pull them out, it's alright. So, <clears throat> yeah I think we'll have to undo that as well. I'll need to get some brake clean. There is so much dirt and shit in here, no wonder they were sort of leaking. So I'll take this one off as well and give it a clean and I'll come back to yous. Alright, so I gave them a bit of a clean up. They're not too bad now. So I think this o-ring we need to replace is right in the guts there. There should be like an o-ring and a little backup plate apparently to the parts we've got. So I don't know if I think that's where it was leaking out around there. I don't think we need to undo this whole thing, but I might wait until Dad gets back just to check. Um, but yeah, so I've sort of given it a half clean up, so I'll wait for him to get back, and then I'll uh, yeah talk to him about what he wants to do. Uh, one thing I did work out, which I haven't been wondering about, this little bottle I finally worked out is where all the leak oils that sort of leak off I'm meant to drain down in there, in these little covers, that's what this hose is for. I didn't realise that that hose actually went to nothing. Um, it wasn't actually hooked up to the little container, so it was probably just dribbling oil onto the back of the tractor. Um, yeah, I think she might be blocked though. So, I'll give all this a clean up as well. And, um, yeah, wait for Dad to get back, and then we'll rebuild it. Rightio, so I cleaned up these um, caps here, pulled it all apart. Got them nice and clean. Made sure that all the oil is going to be able to flow that leaks down into the little container. And I've been screwing around for ages. You can see in there there's a blue um, ring and a just a normal O-ring in behind it. Been screwing around for ages trying to get those two in. They're really fiddly. So here's the new ones here. That, are, that little blue ring has to go in a certain way and then the O-ring has to go in behind it. Yeah, it's super fiddly. Probably took me a good 10 minutes to get that to sit in there properly, so I'm hoping that they're going to work. Uh, it doesn't, that doesn't come back yet, so I just thought I'd just chuck them in. And um, yeah, because uh, there's no other, there's no reason why it should leak out of that, the other little nipple end in there. Um, if it was the case, it'd be leaking right now. So I reckon it's just those o-rings and that other little blue seal that have to go in and seal it up and i reckon that was probably the problem then this might be a re i reckon this might be a revised part because here's one of the old o-rings and you can see it's all sort of chewed up um not really sealing it's pretty brittle um so with this that blue ring uh, the backup seal is what they call it in the paperwork i reckon that might take be like the revised part of it and that's why they've got it to stop it leaking so yeah i'll try and get these other few in and um yeah see how we go all right so dad just came back with the um transmission fluid so we're gonna top it up on the truck and uh get it get that finished so then we can just focus on the tractor which i've done a second coupling on so i'm halfway it shouldn't take too much longer so that's just going to get a funnel and we'll pour a bit more in
topped up the transmission fluid. We ended up on about seven litres in, so she was pretty low. Um, it's a little bit over full now, but that's fine. Older autos like this doesn't matter if you top them up a little bit too full. All that happen is it might spew a bit out of the nips to give you like unlucky. So we put the cap back down, we're gonna just chuck some wind in the tires and I'll take it for another drive and see um, yeah if it's improved it. Rightio, just took the truck for another spin. She's pretty gutless being so old and I was sort of trying to work out why I was struggling to get over 80. Yeah, you know, I did a bit of reading in the book. It's a four-speed auto, Allison Auto, so that's probably why. I haven't got a fifth gear, so she struggles to get over 80. Is what it is, so I'll just send it, I think. No, uh, we'll try and finish this tractor off now. All right, just finished rebuilding the hydraulic couplings. So they're looking a lot cleaner, all the new seals in them. This one's busted, but oh well. So yeah, it's looking a little bit nicer anyway. So what I'm gonna do now is back the tractor out, back it up to the slasher, and we'll just hook the hydraulic coupling up and, um, yeah, see if it lakes. Hopefully it doesn't. So, we'll see what happens. Rightio, so we hooked up the tractor to the slasher, couplings in, no leaks. We did realise that one of the hydraulic hose ends was a bit rusty around one of the edges. I don't have it here, but it doesn't matter. And it was also leaking out of there. So that was one of the problems also. But um, yeah, they're all sealed up nice and tight now on these two hoses anyway. We haven't tested these ones, but we'll just assume that they're okay. So no oil leaking out. And any oil that did leak out just went straight into the little container now so that's good so I think that's a problem solved and we shouldn't be losing as much oil or if any oil now which is a good thing uh, yeah we'll just now that we know about that funny end we'll just make sure we check all the hydraulics on all the implements and we use them now so we don't have any dramas we still we have to rebuild the massive version ones too but um, that could have been a drama with that one leaking if it had a funny end so that's all done and dusted and we can pack all the stuff up and we'll um, move on to marking those bales of wool. Alright yeah, everybody, we are in the wool shed currently with all the wool. As you can see, Dad's pressed all of it. So we are, uh, well he's going to make me I think, um, mark all the bales of wool. Brand it. Brand it, mark it, same thing. Anyway, um, yeah, seeing that we didn't really... Um, I'll wrap up from shearing, I guess. So I thought I'd grab dad today, just sort of have a chat about what he thought about the wool and how shearing went and all those things. So I'll give you this over to him. Yeah, good day viewers. I don't, don't know what he really wants me to say. But uh, yeah, we got we had another shearer this year. He was a bit quicker than uh, Shane was and we done it on two days over a weekend. Um, yeah, so the wool, the wiener wool was still a bit uh, water stainy, but um, the majority of the grown sheep, they were all pretty good. We didn't have as much tender wool this year, and um, yeah, it went pretty well, really. So, like Cam said, I bailed up the wool here the other day because I haven't had any work to do. Um, so I'm going to get him to brand it now while I go and do some other things and I think the wool buyer bloke might come on Tuesday or next Friday depending on what what he's done but yeah no it, it was good this year because we had our new U-Butte press which everyone probably saw it did save a lot of work for Cameron anyway so yeah, the wool was good, not enough of it, but hopefully the price will be right when they get sold and um, yeah, I'll be able to retire a happy man. Yeah, so 
We still have to pull that wool press apart at some point down the track. I don't know if we were going to do that before lamb shearing next year. So, yeah, we need to pull both those rams apart and get that one strained up and just reseal it. And that'll probably be good enough. Hopefully, might make a bit of a difference to it. But, um, yeah, Dad's written on all the labels of each bale. Um, hey? Yeah, well, in this world, you rip. So, I've explained it before, but we can run through it again for people who aren't familiar or new to the channel. Basically, up on the top is a label, and you have to fill it out. Basically, the stenciling does the, is the same thing, isn't it, Dad? Sorry? The stenciling is basically the same stuff we have on top of the label. Yes, yeah. So, yeah, we... Basically, when it goes into the wool store, uh, they stack them outwards so they see this label on top. But we've got a brand, the face of the bale as well, so when they're standing up, everyone can see what they're, where they're from and what they are. Yeah, so obviously it's all labelled what you've got to, what you've got to write. So Menin Plains is the farm. Uh, 3A pieces, so this is just pieces from in the bin there, and 3A is our main line. Bow number eight. No class of stamp as yet. Are you, are you stamping these? Yeah. Yeah. Well, Dad's got a stamp for with his wool class uh, identification on it, and he'll stamp that at some point. Um, yeah, because for those who don't know, Dad's qualified wool classer, so he has a special stencil that he gets sent out once a year, and every he three every three years, is it? Yeah, so every three years, and um, he has to put his stencil on all the woolly classes. Well, each bale anyway. So we'll give you a quick run through of how and what it is, and then um, yeah, I'll stencil all these bales. So this is Dad's classer um, stencil. So 21 is the year. That's his identification number. What does AW mean? Australian wool. Oh, Australian wool. Does it? Yeah, I'm getting the new one in tomorrow, probably before Christmas. Oh, uh, so expiry date. Sorry, not year. Um, yeah. And then what's that? That's just the brand, isn't it? Oh, that's just the their little mark. Yeah. And then 3AM, which is 3A meaning our main line, and M stands for Merino, because the wool is a Dooney Merino. Um, yeah, even though we just call them Doonies, they are a Dooney Merino. So that's what the wool comes under. What percentage are they of Merino? Uh, probably about 60% of Merino. Yeah, so they're probably <laughs> the majority Merino, so really should be calling them a, mer a Merino Dooney. But anyway, we call them dunes. And then last is the bale number, which is six. So that's the sixth one that's been labeled six. Yeah, that's just the one I've done first. Yeah, there's no particular order to it. No. And that's basically the gist of it. Um, and now this bale's all stenciled up and ready to be taken away to the wool store. No, oh, and Dad's also got his stencil here as well. You got upside down. No, I'll figure it out from there. And that's basically just the exact same as his stencil. 
So he just stamps them as well. All right, so Dad's left me in charge to stands all these bales. So I'll try not to stuff it up and um, see how we go. Bingo bango, happy days. Rightio, just finished stenciling all the bales. Um, yeah, they're not amazing or anything. It's not a fine art, I don't think. It just has to be legible. So I just thought for those, if you follow along, I explained last year roughly all the meanings of um, the uh, types of wool. But just for those who are new, I'll just give you a rough explanation as to exactly what goes on. So as we said, farm, Medina Plains, Dad's uh, class of number, expiry date, blah, blah, blah. BC means bulk class. So there's two different types of wool in this bale. And uh, I'm assuming Dad has separated them. We Last year we separated them with newspaper, but he may have used something else this year. And that's why you put bulk class so that the people at the store know that there is more than two types of wool. Then 11 is just your number. 3 a.m. I just explained four is Main line, so this is our, our best wool. It's not the best wool, but it's our best wool. And then M for Merino, because it's a Dooney Merino. That's what that stands for. Then on this one, we have three A pieces. So PCS means pieces. So that's the stuff that Dad tears off the fleeces when he's skirting them and then chucks in the bin right here. 
So that's what that is. That's our best. So that's our main line again. So our best wool and the pieces off of it. We have another bulk class and another three A pieces. Then the rest of the wool up there, so I think there's five bales all together, that's all 3am, so that's all our main line, our best wool. How many did we actually get? I think we got, uh, yeah, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, yeah, seven ba uh, bales, not completely chockers, because there's a couple we'll sort of learn, getting the hang of with the press, uh, but seven bales of our mainline wool, which is, I can't remember how many we got last year, but it's more than that, I'm pretty sure. So that's pretty good. And then we have this one last bag over here. Now I'm not exactly, I'm... so we have crutchings, so A crutchings, stained crutchings, and ballys stained. So BLS is ballys, and STN means stained. Stained crutchings is CRTS and main. Well, it's not. It's our not our main line, but that's a part of main line. So it's A crutchings. So that is basically all the crutchings and stains. I don't know where the rest of the bellies went. Oh, that might be a bulk class. But um, yeah. So that brings us pretty much to an end of all of the shearing related stuff for now. Anyway, we'll have lamb shearing early next year, February. Oh well, middle of February to maybe March. We'll see how we go. It depends when we get them in. But um, that is basically all of our main shearing done for the year. Bit of work to do on the press, bit of work to do on the shed, um, always a bit of work. So I will wrap the video up there. It's been sort of a bit all over the shop today. Um, didn't get as much as I wanted to get done today because it was sort of stuffed around with that horse truck. But that's the way it is. At least the tractor's going and um, the wool is all stenciled up and ready to be sold. So I think Dad said he was coming out uh, next week or the weekend after so um, we'll leave it there so anyway thanks for watching everybody we'll catch you in the next one all right